Good morning, Saints. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, Twitter. Good morning, Instagram. Everybody on social media. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am your host this morning, uh, senior pastor and founder of the City of Refuge Church, Curtis Alexander. This morning, Saints, I'm, I'm going to talk to you briefly about rediscovering your passion. Rediscovering your passion. We thank God for you watching. We thank God for you participating. We thank God for you this morning. This first day of May, we just received our communion and we thank God for the worship that has went forth. We thank God for the prayers and the light thereof. We thank God for you just being who you are, a blessing and a servant of the Most High God. So if you're in-house with me this morning, get your Bibles and stand with me. Let us pray. Father God of heaven, we come before your throne of grace to say thank you this morning, to worship, to praise, and to, and to honor you, Father God. Lord, we just want to say thank you for as we continue in worship, continue in praise, and continue listening to what you have to say to, to our hearts, to the body of Christ. Sit with us now and become our holy guest as this time does become divine. It is in the mighty and precious name of Jesus that we do pray. We all can say amen, and you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Saints, rediscovering your passion is my message this morning. Rediscovering your passion. I give you, want to give you two scriptures that I want you to think about as we go through the message this morning. Revelation chapter 2 verse 4 says, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Revelation chapter 2 verse 4. Very powerful scripture this morning and also in the like revelation chapter 3 verses 15 through 16 very familiar passage of scripture it says i know your works that you are neither cold or hot mm. i could wish you were cold or hot so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot i will spew you out of my mouth uh, as you as you take a moment to to digest these two scriptures, saints, uh, what are some of the things that comes to your mind? How do you see your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ in light of of these two scriptures? What is it in a person's life that could cause them to lose their first love or become lukewarm after being filled with zeal? and a passion for the Lord and his kingdom. <laughs> you see, what is it that, 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 that causes a person who once burned with a fervent intensity that produced a hot fire within their souls and spirits and ignited others with the same love of fervency to go out? Both of these, both of these scripture saints are indicative of a person who has lost their passion for the gospel and the kingdom. You see, in the message this morning, I, I, I just want to talk about how we can rediscover the passion that once ignited our hearts and spirits. This is something all of us as, as Christians deal with from time to time. We seem to lose heart. No matter who we are. We all have a tendency to lose our passion for the gospel and the kingdom at times. We want to give up. We want to give in. You see, that's what it's about, saints. Passion being defined is the energy of our soul. It's an intense emotion and, and compelling action. It's a strong devotion to some object, activity, or concept. You see, why do people lose their passion? 
Before we get too far into why we need passion and how we can repossess our, our passions, let's look at some reasons why people lose their passion. You see, point number one, by allowing something precious to become familiar. When dealing with people, do you remember how it was when you didn't know Jesus or, or has it become too familiar? My God, dealing with familiarity, familiar spirits. You see, and, the, uh, and the, another re reason why people lose their passion is a desire for acceptance and approval. My God. Our desire for approval causes us to, to turn the temperature down on the passion of our lives until we seek to be normal or average. Or for a better word, lukewarm. Hmm. Number three is we live in a society that is passive. We become we become conformed to the world. We talked about it last week. We don't we're in the world, but we're not of the world. We shouldn't be of the world. You see, saints, we become passive. Number four, apathy increases with age. It, it may be that that wise young believers are very rare. Zealous old believers are also very rare. Number five, no purpose beyond self. People who are bound up in themselves become bored with life. Prideful. Only desire to get up and listen to serial go, uh, ghost snap, crackle, and pop. Come on, we got to do better, saints. Number, seven, uh, number six, uh, falling to count in all joy in the midst of life's trials and hardship. Number seven, unrepented sin, my God. God, we got to get rid of it. Unrepented sin. Number eight, unresolved issues, pain, hurts, etc. Don't deal with that. We lose passion for unrepented sins. Unreserved, unresolved issues and pains and hurts from the past that we have not dealt with or have allowed God to deal with on our behalf. Why we lose passion. You see, says characteristics of a person, of a person uh, driven by passion is, is goal-oriented and, 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 and a visionary, is a self-starter, you know, has a positive attitude, gives a hundred percent all the time, strives for excellence, isn't satisfied with mediocrity, is creative at, at getting things done well no matter what. Has a whatever it takes attitude, isn't overcome by obstacles. Mm. Accepts responsibility. Doesn't make excuse, excuses or shift blame. Inspires others to do their best. And they rise to leadership. After looking and talking about all of the at the list, do you see yourself lacking in any of those areas? If so, you need to have your passion restored. We need to have our passion restored and for the for especially during the times that we live now, our passion needs to be restored, saints. The weight of the world is so heavy and burdensome on our shoulders and in our lives that we lose passion for the gospel. Because the weights, the burdens, the unrepented sin is, 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 is too heavy. Why we need passion, our passion restored. In order to change in any area or to rise to a challenge, there must first of all be that which motivates us to do so. See, I believe if we really desire to see our passion for the gospel and the kingdom restored to where Jesus desires it to be, we must be properly motivated. We have got to be motivated. Passion is the first step to achievement. Matthew 11, chapter 11, verse 12, it reads, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. We love to quote that scripture when we're in trouble. 
The kingdom suffered violence. And the violent does what? It takes it by force. See, we got to understand the Bible. We have to understand the context in which it was written. We always can't use the word in the, to justify. I'm not here to talk about that this morning. But 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 we, we got to regain our passion. The Greek word for violent in this context literally means energetic are those who strive to obtain in its uh, to obtain its privileges with the utmost eagerness and effort. See, all of us have an inherent desire to succeed at whatever it is we are doing, relationship with God, our ministries, our jobs, our school, our marriage and family, but our desire will determine our destiny. The starting point of all of, of all achievement is desire. Keep this Constantly in mind. What, it, desire. What is your heart's desire? Well, it should be to please God. <laughs> weak desires bring weak results. Just as a small amount of fire makes a small amount of heat. If you find yourself lacking in persistence, this weakness may be remedied by building a stronger fire under your desires. A person who is excited about what they are doing can sell you just about anything. That's why you see car salesmen. They, they're, 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 they're passionate. They're excited. Well, some of them. Most of them should be. Your, your temperature will take you to the, to the level of your, ex, ex, I'm sorry, to your level of excellence more than your gifting or your education ever will. I think of the example of both Jesus and the Apostle Paul, two people who accomplished great things in their personal callings. Jesus constantly achieved the desi desired effect that he was looking to. The example of Jesus, John 2, uh, 17, uh, says his disciples remember that it was written, zeal for your house has eaten me up. John 4, 34 says, Jesus said, my food is to do the uh will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 17. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. See, we got the examples of Paul. Of one who was driven by passion. Driven by passion. We've got to get back to the passion, saints. Look at all the, uh, uh, the opposition and persecution he faced. Yet in the midst of it all, talking about Paul, he achieved great things. Well, look at it. In those places where he was mobbed, stoned, jailed, or persecuted, he planted great churches. Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. Philippians chapter 3 verse 14 I press very familiar passage of scripture we love to quote it. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus I press even when going through trials and tribulation I press even while we're yet still in sin I still press toward the goal for the prize don't give up. Don't give in. Don't throw the don't throw in the towel when you're going through trials and tribulations. Count it all joy while going through trials. My God, I feel the presence of the Lord. Going through trials and tribulations, I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Can you say Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Colossians verse one twenty nine says, "To the to this end, I I also labor, striving according to His working, which." Works in me mightily. Passion. We've got to regain our passion. The one place where Paul failed to build a church was in Athens. There, there was no persecution or opposition, only indifference and the lack of passion towards anything. You see, even, even Paul couldn't build a church in the midst of apathy and indifference. Paul was a great man. Can't wait to meet him. Passion will, number two, passion will increase power. You know, 
The key to willpower is want power. People who want something badly enough that can usually find the willpower to achieve it. You know that, saints. People who want things badly enough can usually find the willpower to achieve it. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 say, says, I say then, walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If we're continually walking in the spirit of God, like we should, then we should not be able to fulfill, we should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because we're always walking in the spirit. Passion. It increases power. Willpower. Uh, Romans 12, 11. Not lagging in di diligence. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Come on, saints. We, we got to get our passion back. We passionate about everything in, than what we're supposed to be passionate about. We're passionate with material things. We're passionate with each other. We're not passionate about the presence and the spirit of God or the kingdom of God as we once were. We've lost it. Too much going on in the world. The new <sighs> distractions get you all off center, all off course. We got to stay the course. Passion. Number three, uh, passion changes lives. As Christians, we interact with other people constantly, unbelievers and believers alike. God wants us to have an influence upon the people we touch. Amen. Your passion for the Lord will influence the, 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 the many people you come in contact with for, for the good. There's no greater joy than, than when you see someone else's life change as, as a result of your influence. You see, saints, passion. We got to be passionate about the kingdom of God. We got to have that fire, that zeal. We got to re rekindle our passion. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 2 says, For I know your willingness about which I boast of you to the Macedonians that Athia was ready for a year ago. And your zeal has stirred up the majority. You see, saints, passion changes lives. And the point number four, passion makes impossibilities possible. Passion makes impossibilities possible. Man is so made that whatever... Anything fires is sold and possibilities vanish. Passion allows you to see beyond the difficulties and to lay hold of the faith that is needed for impossibilities. Faith. We all know what faith is. Substance of things hopeful. Evidence. Of things not seen. Come on, we all need the faith. We all need the passion. Again. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah, we can do all things. But through Christ who strengthens us. Passion. What is your passion? What is your, what is your passion this morning, saints? My passion for God protects me from wrong. It, it will be shown by great desire for personal holiness. It, it will reflect the attitude of Matthew 5, 29 through 30. 5, 29 through 30. And if your eyes causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you than that one of your members perish than 
for your whole body to be cast into hell. Very familiar passage of scripture that we read and talk about. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. You see, saints, <clears throat> passion, rediscovering your passion, coming to a close this morning, but rediscover your passion, practical steps for rediscovering your passion. No one keeps up his passion automatically. Passion must be nourished with new actions, new aspirations, new efforts, and vision. It is one's own fault if his enthusiasm is gone or lost. He has failed to feed it. So practical steps, saints, this morning. Number one, believe that passion is the deciding difference. Believe that passion is the deciding difference. You must believe that it's, it's passion that is going to make the deciding difference in your life, your marriage, your family, your ministry, your relationship with the Lord and others. A marriage without passion is lifeless. Why we have so many divorces. Irreconcilable differences. There's no passion. Matthew eleven twelve 12 says, and, for the, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of violent, heaven suffered violence, and the violence does what? Take it by force. Number two, realize that God's desire is passionate believers. Realize that God desires passionate believers. We must understand that being fervent and passionate is, automatic, is actually a command. It is God's will and desire towards us. Matthew twenty two thirty seven 37 said, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. You see, God's desires passionate believers. Romans 12, 11, not lacking in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Saints. Point number three, pray for passion. Pray for passion. Matthew 7, 7, 8 says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and, who, and he who seeks Finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. Matthew seven eleven. If then, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask? Pray for passion. Ask him. Pray for passion. Point number four, activate your spiritual gifts. First Timothy 4, 14 through 15 says, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy, by the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that you progress may be evident. Your progress may be evident to all. Do not neglect the gift that's in you. Be far that it be preaching, ministry, administration, healing, whatever gift you have, singing, music, do not neglect the gift. Verse, uh, point number five, live in an environment where goals can be seen and achieved. Physical environment, cognitive environment, social environment, emotional environment, and spiritual environment. Physical environment, wealth, technology, health, the material world. The cognitive environment is knowledge, information, education, the intellectual world. Social environment is the family, is your family, your friends, your neighbors, your church, the social world. 
your emotional environment, your feelings, your attitudes, the psychological world, spiritual environment, the eternal and transcendent God. Point number six, associate with people of passion. They're out there. There's people passionate about the body of Christ. There's people passionate about the kingdom of God. We need to associate ourselves with those types of people. Surround yourself with passionate people for the kingdom of God. Build relationships. Build friendships with the people that are passionate about the body of Christ and about the kingdom of God. Remember point number seven, what God has done for you. The children of Israel had just watched the Lord put an interstate highway through the middle of the Red Sea, but felt sure he wasn't up to bring home their supper. They, they watched him rain bread over their, their whole camp and then swore up and down he was going to let them die of thirst. So he says, maybe that's why Moses exhorted them 17 times in the book of Deuteronomy to remember what the Lord had done for them. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 18 says, you shall not be afraid of them, but you shall remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all of Egypt. We have to remember what God has done for us so we can rediscover our passion. We must remember what the Lord God has done for us so we can rediscover our passion. We, 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 and you shall remember the Lord, the Lord your God for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. We just read that. Remember what God has done for you, saints. <clears throat> Concluding remarks, saints. Uh, consistent enthusiasm and passion come from within rather than being dependent on changing circumstances. Inconsistency confuses, discourages, and demotivates. Let's propose to be people of passion. The City of Refuge Church is a church where... We have people of passion. The wind of God is always blowing, but you must hoist your sail. You see, we, 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 we are a church of passionate believers. We love the Lord. We worship the Lord. We're passionate about hearing what thus saith the Lord to the body of Christ and to the community. Amen, somebody. We thank God for passionate people. Galatians chapter 4 verse 18 says, But it is good to be zealous in a good thing always, and not only when I am present with you. Uh, so, saints, what are you talking about this? What are you saying this morning, Pastor? We have got to rediscover our passion in the body of Christ and in the world. We've got to rediscover our passion. We've given you several ways to rediscover your passion. From this day forward, we should not be lacking in passion any longer. Share this message with every believer, everybody you come in contact with about rediscovering their, your passion for the Lord. That's what it's about. On this first Sunday of May, going forward, 22 and beyond. Your passion. Got to have passion. We have passion for everything else. We need passion for the body of Christ. We need passion for the kingdom of God. We need passion for the community to see that the Lord is moving in the midst of our lives. Can you say amen? Rediscovering your passion. Come on, saints, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. We thank God for him doing us a great work in us. We thank God. Share this message with your family. Share this message with your friends, your coworkers, your enemies. Anybody, everybody you come in contact with. Rediscover the passion. 
your passion. That's the message. That's the message. We all need to rediscover our passion. We all lose, may sometimes lose hearts. But we need to rediscover our passion. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. We thank God this morning. Amen. Amen. Y'all be blessed. Have an awesome, blessed week. God loves you. You know, if you've never accepted the Lord and said, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have the opportunity to get saved. You have the opportunity now to get saved as on this first Sunday of May, going into a new year, this new season, you have that opportunity to get saved. If you don't have a church home, you have that opportunity to join with the body of Christ at the City of Refuge Church, by way of the City of Refuge Church. You have that opportunity to, to join. You have that opportunity. If you need prayer, which we all need prayer, we all need to have that passion. We have that opportunity. We have men and women of God who can pray with you, pray for you, agree with you, and believe with you. For whatever the need is. Amen. So stand with me as we get ready to dismiss and go out and regain our passion. Share the message. Share your passion. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this time we've gathered and assembled. We, we love you. We want to regain our passion for you, Lord God. We ask that you help us regain our passion for you, Father. We thank God for the message this morning. We thank God. We thank you, Lord, for you speaking through your servant. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, rest, rule, and abide. Henceforth, now, and forever. You're coming out, you're lying down in your labor and your leisure to that day where there's no dawn and no sunset. Love on somebody, hug somebody, share your passion this week with the people you come in contact with. God keep you, God bless you. We'll see you live in person next week. Be blessed, have an awesome blessed week. To that time we come back together again, if it be the Lord's will. Have an awesome week, be blessed.